Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and welcome to No Sediment Wine Podcast. Today my guest is Josef Schuller, or as we know you, Peppy. <laughs> you are Master of Wine and you are Managing Director of Austrian Wine Academy. Hi. <laughs> Hi, welcome back actually. Yeah, I actually love this. Uh, I love this uh, place where we are, but uh, we will talk a bit uh, about it a bit later, but today's topic I decided is the wine education. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who've been commenting on my YouTube channel that I don't need wine books or education. I just, you know, open the wine and uh, uh, and this is my education, the bottle of wine. But I disagree most of the time, uh, but I wanted to talk with someone who uh, knows about this more as you are. But before we go there, maybe you can tell us a bit more about yourself. Oh, um, yeah. In the past 35 years, I haven't done much uh, different things than what I do nowadays. I, I, I had the pleasure to be brought in after having been in South Africa, California. Actually brought in from California to set up a wine center here mm -hmm. in, in, in Austrian Rust, which turned out then to become the Austrian Wine Academy. Um, and with Austrian wine, it started growing uh, and improving and, and, and people coming from Austria, from around the globe, actually. Uh, and we very soon, actually, then uh, were the largest wine school here on the continent. And yeah, so that's my job, managing director of Austrian Wine Academy. In between, uh, we, when we started offering WSAT diploma, our first graduate said, what's now? So I said, well, that's a must of wine. So I told them everything I knew about it, the Master of Wine back in the early 90s. And uh, then there was coincidentally a Master of Wine course in, in southern France. So I said, hey, I would like to attend this just to know more because I've got people who want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I got hooked <laughs> on this whole thing, did then my own Master of Wine and got involved in the Institute. Uh, and and uh, we started uh, then also uh, the first year course of the Institute here. So we've done actually this year 20 years that the Master of Wine course is 20. taken. 20? Yeah. Wow. So more than 100 Masters of Wine got through uh, or visited here our place or did this one week uh, introduction course at Wine Academy. So this is uh, also something we're going to celebrate. <laughs> oh, wow. More than 100. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. 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 Wow. And uh, if we, if you want to tell uh, more about this specific place, I mean, Rust, because when someone asks me specifically about the WSCT courses, I always suggest them to come here rather than to do it in London, because here you are literally surrounded by the mm -hmm. wines. And I think that's the yeah. best place to study wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how come in Rust, uh, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, well, when we started out here, I knew from my South African and very much sort of Californian experience that there was this uh, diploma of WCT. And I approached our friends in London when there were an uh, uh, English-only uh, institution back in 1990. said, hey, we're setting up this wine school in Austria, and I want also to offer the diploma course. But uh, in those days, Austrians did not speak English very well, so it had to be in German. So we started to develop this course in German language, the, the diploma course, and then from here to Germany and other countries, and then only in, in, in English. And the reason why it was here, because here, this beautiful building and center in the wine capital of Burgenland. In Austria, you have more or less two. If you want to say Burgen, for Burgenland area, it would be Rust. For Low Austria, it would be Kremlis, so they, those two places. And uh, so we have this beautiful building here, and 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 uh, which is now our big campus, uh, and yeah, and when our friends from London visited us for the first time, that we do this uh, German language diploma course, they said, hey, but this is as far as you can go in the German-speaking world because we are literally on the Hungarian border. Uh, yes, of course we are. Uh, that's what it is, um, and it's not in the center of well uh, of, of everything. It's in it's in the well end, um, which of course, but also does have the advantage that when people come here, they stay here. They don't commute back to Vienna or somewhere. So we have this uh, campus feeling, campus atmosphere. It's a very small place. We are surrounded by top producers of Austria, walking distance to vineyard. So as you said. 
we have this uh, set up with this particular, when you come here, you focus on study. And this is appreciated by students, by MW students. So, um, and I'm very happy that, um, yeah, that that opportunity to to be here in this fantastic place in the heart of Rost. I agree. I agree because when you go, for example, to London, you have this big city life that you also want to indulge. While when you're here, you're really focusing on studies. Yeah, well, you go together to restaurants, to wine growers, and yeah. it's really. You grow together as a yeah, small family. Exactly. Because in your case, <laughs> the same thing, I remember. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but who do you think uh, WSET is for? Is it for someone who only works in the industry, or could it also be for a casual wine drinker who kind of wants to know a bit more about wine? Well, I, d I don't know um, exactly. Uh, this probably WCT could could tell you if they would have statistics globally. Don't think they would have it because you've got so many partners having their own thing, their own uh, national kind of setup. And but you, of course, in the lower levels of MW, of, of uh, WCT courses, you would have uh, probably a higher portion of also eager consumers who just want to know a little bit, a little bit more about wine. And as you climb up the ladder to the, to diploma it would be more and more professionals. Um, what I see from here, from us, is that uh, we have also a diploma program, a private wine consumers, who come here and they would say, well, I just do it for myself or I do it to, you know, because I want to see if, if, you know, if I can do it. Um, and I've got another job, but most of them start then something with wine you know oh um either either their own real business you know moving i've got enough on banking you know now i want to do something nice uh, setting up a wine tray doing something on the internet or etc so so we see many people moving also into wine after they climbed up all the ladder to diploma program and i think it is a, a tendency and a trend over the years uh, the past 30 years uh, wine started booming all over the place when education started booming all over the place. And to have um, a, a minimum knowledge uh, about wine is now something uh, which is, I think, worldwide established and also in business, you know, in, like uh, for business lunches, etc. Yeah. Um, so so it, it has really, yeah, 30, 40 years that we have seen this uh, around the globe, this development. Well, have you seen also the same thing in the Institute of Masters of Wine, that there are more people applying uh, who are just casual wine drinkers rather than uh, someone who's working in industry? Well, the Institute, it's a different thing because it's a member's association and it's a member's association of wine professionals. So uh, in order to apply for the Master of Wine program, you have to be involved in the wine business in the one or other way. Uh, so that's a precondition, sort of a eager a uh, private wine lover could not make it, uh, you know, into into the master wine course. Of course, uh, many are on the road, you know, start develop their business and have this then three years uh, of professional experience uh, that qualifies them also to 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 enter the program. Uh, but it's uh, a program for professionals actually. Yeah. Okay, so if we know that someone is studying master of wine or they already have the MW uh, letters next to their name, we know that they are wine professionals yeah. in the industry. Okay. What I find sometimes funny is when I say to my friends or like other people that I study wine, they're like, oh, you must be drinking a lot of wine. You're like, it must be very fun. Uh, and uh, I must I not necessarily think it's true. Can you tell us what it really takes to study wine? Because it actually is quite yeah. difficult. It is, uh, as you say, always the same same notion. Um, also, my friends would say, oh, well, yeah, your job, you know, just drinking and eating, uh, that's fun. Yeah? Uh, of course, we're also drinking and eating, but uh, um, those people who, who are blibbed into wine uh, would, would know that tasting a lot of wine um, is a difficult thing, um, mentally, physically, um, so the tasting part of it. And of course, as professionals, if, if we drink or taste many different wines, of course, we have to spit the wine, otherwise it wouldn't work, you know, the, the alcohol and all the uh, sort of different uh, flavors would block our, our palate. Uh, and I would invite everybody who has this feeling to taste 50, 60 or even more wines, uh, I think it would, they would uh, change the wine very, very soon. This is, of course, only the tasting part. Yeah. 
And the theory part of it is, as in many, many, many other fields, um, you, we have all heard this thing, um, I don't know about wine, um, but um, I know what I like. And, uh, but this is already an advanced thing. If somebody has reached the stage to say, um, I don't know about wine, but I know what I like and I drink this, that's already great, you know. But often people say, I don't drink wine because it's so complicated, I don't know if, if I do the right choice. That's all nonsense, you know. To start it with a first notion, I drink what I like is perfect. And even if to us professional, this is like, okay, you know, we wouldn't really uh, drink such styles yeah. of wine. Um, but it's fine for, for beginners, you know, they, they, they should drink what they like. And it's uh, the same thing um, as with other fields. So look here, this arts, you know, I don't know about arts, but I know what I like. Oh, this is, okay, I'm good. <laughs> if I know about arts, you know, if I know more, I have a totally different appreciation and have a different, totally different basis how to assess and how to appreciate art. And this is the same with wine. The more I know about wine, the better I can really understand, um, the better I know the region where the wines come from. I get a picture of, 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 of the place. I get maybe even a picture of the producer, you know, if I dig into this. And, and this is a fascinating experience, as with an artist. You know the, the, you know the artist, you know his history. And, and it's a very, very similar thing, especially if we go now into top quality and high quality wines. So you slightly touched this next question that I wanted to ask you. Um, I will give you an example and, uh, and then the question will, will follow. Some of my friends were traveling to France and then they bought a wine in uh, people from wine industry. They bought Jura, Rijon. They opened it up. They didn't know about it at that time. So they said, this is terrible wine. Yeah. We, will go, we will go back to the shop and we will yeah. exchange. So yeah. they did this two times. Mm -hmm. And then they called back home and then they were talking about this wine. And then this other guy said, Rijon, it should be this way. <laughs> and then the next story I hear from the same people, they said, and then we were drinking that wine, you know, uh, and we were enjoying it. We loved it so much. Yeah, yeah. So do you think theoretical knowledge is, is essential to appreciate wine? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you gave now this, this dramatic uh, example. Uh, many of, of, of us have been to Greece, um, encountered the Aretina, you know, if you, they taste the retina at home, they think it's horrible. There, in the right ambience with the Greeks, it makes sense. It's okay. Um, although it's such a particular, strange, actually, taste. Yeah, the, the wine that your horizon is, and again with arts, you know. Uh, I don't know about modern arts. It's so strange, you know. I, <laughs> if you know about it, it makes sense. If you don't know about it, oh, I could do this. It makes sense, this little piece here. Um, and, and um, of course, those particular special styles of wine, uh, if you don't know about it, you, you react in this way. You don't like it and you don't drink it. And maybe with knowledge, why does the wine taste like so? Why should it be and where should it be consumed and how? And they say, oh, okay, now, yeah, maybe, maybe it's... Uh, but the first impression would, oh, it's off, you know, it's, it's, it's not nice, it's, it's faulty maybe. Yeah. And, and of course, um, with a wider knowledge, with experience, with experience, uh, natural wine, orange wine, a uh, thing of the past decade or so, many consumers who don't know, also professionals, in fact, <laughs> about wine, um, they, they would not appreciate it because it's so much different. Um, I do, <laughs> uh, but many don't, and that's fine. Um, but um, but with experience and knowledge, you know why this wine tastes like that. That is actually supposed to taste like that, and then you still can decide: is it something for me? Do I want it? No. Okay, not. But if yes, yeah, and you probably go in, even deeper into the subject. Yeah. But then, if we look on the other side of uh, of the same question, I sometimes think that too much wine or too deep wine knowledge also restricts you of mm -hmm. appreciating wine. Like, for example, also some of my uh, viewers uh, on YouTube, they they just go crazy about typicity. And they say, like, this wine is not typical of that region or that of that grape, so it's, it's not good. Yeah. And uh, I also have a great example here. I, I remember we tasted a beautiful producer, Francois Cotat from Sanse. Mm -hmm. And I would say it is atypical 
of sunset, but it is one of the best sunsets I ever yeah, tasted. Yeah, it's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. So do you think that also too much wine knowledge can do? Yeah. Um, but this is actually, again, uh, probably depending on the, on, the, on the context. You know, if you taste the wine, uh, like also in a, in a competition, in an in a, in a exam or so, you know, uh, you have your picture, you have your experience um, of a particular style of wine, of a particular expression from an area, from a variety, etc. And if it does not show this, you know, then you say something is missing here. You know, if a, a Mal uh, Sauvignon from Marlboro does not taste as 99% of them do, you think hey, there's something wrong with it. Um, but that's a different thing, you know, but as a, just having a glass of wine to appreciate, I don't care at all if this is not typical for this or that. If I enjoy the glass of wine as it is, that's a totally different experience. And, and I must tell you, I drink um, very standard wine as well with some of my friends, you know, and say, hey, but uh, you know, you do drink this as well. So yeah, for this for this company, for you guys, having it here on this table, it's the perfect wine, you know, and I don't, don't think, I, I just drink and enjoy this fruity, fresh, whatever, even cold red wine or whatever, as it is, and it, it, it works. Um, or spritzer, as we drink in Austria, you know, soda water and wine mixture, you know, on a hot day, uh, in summertime, that's a perfect, uh, perfect drink. So, so I think it's two different things, and and um, I, I'm quite happy that I belong to, to, to to this league who can also enjoy simple wines uh, mm -hmm. and, and without really, without really trying to be somehow, yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, it's, it's, but, but then, you know, we, I come from a wine growing area. Uh, I grew up with wines that were partially also faulty in yeah. old days. And so you were happy if, if a wine was not faulty to find them. Um, so, so, so I'm, I'm, maybe it's a different development if you come, um, from a country where there's no wine growing. So you, you actually are taught, uh, sort of the styles of the world of wine and then maybe start on a, on a high quality level already. Um, but I started on actually on, on, on a low quality level in, in old days. Yeah. All right. So I, I. Several times I mentioned the theoretical knowledge in wine, but there's also the practical knowledge. And I've heard some people saying, you know, throw away the books and invest in good corkscrew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, how important is the practical part in wine education, the tasting part? Uh, I think it is that what people primarily uh, want to have uh, if oh. they go for, at least if I judge from our courses, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, of course, it's great. The lecture was great. He gave a great talk. But... It's it's the tasting, you know. They 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 want to they want to learn more about tasting and 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 this what what interests the most. All the other stuff. I mean, if you want to say this way, you can the theory you can like learn at home from books if you wish, you know. Yeah. But then still, with very qualified top lecturers, you get a deep understanding. Um, of course, a person who really. Uh, a specialist in a particular field can give you the personal feeling and experience that you cannot actually read in books or, or learn from somewhere else. Uh, but um, it's actually the tasting uh, experience and tasting training that's what I think people fascinates most. And, and um, you know, we do, of course, um, many, many different levels also here of courses. And of course, the majority of people are sort of in the basic levels, you know, and they come to us first to oh, do a wine course so that I then uh, uh, become sort of uh, more knowledgeable about wine, especially wine tasting, and, and so that I can differentiate a Zweigelt from a Blaufränkisch or a Wittlinger from a Riesling. And in the small exam we do on all levels, they get it wrong. And they're totally, totally disappointed. And I've done this wine course and I did, couldn't differentiate it. Uh, I said, hey, stop it. Everybody does it. We also get, get it wrong. You know, this is not the big thing, you know. Yeah. But there's often this feeling, now I do this uh, wine course and then I know. Yeah. Uh, from most and for all of us who are in the business is that we know the more that we know, uh, that we know nothing. So that this world is so big and, and yeah. uh, we just touching here, scratching the surface a little mm, bit. This is how I feel. <laughs> the more I study, I feel, 
oh my God, I just don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because you know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how important in your uh, opinion is the blind tasting? You said that the differentiating uh, wines, uh, probably it was meant in the blind tasting. Yeah. And majority of the exams yeah. are always blind, done yeah. blind. So uh, why do you think there's such a emphasis on tasting blind? Um, for, for amateurs also, it's a beautiful game. It's a beautiful party game, also for professionals, you know. Uh, the guessing, you know, what is it, you know. Um, so it does have something in it, which is part of wine culture. Bringing people together, exchanging, arguing, you know, about something. Um, wow, I got it right, you know, oh, you know. Um, so this is also part of this uh, blind tasting game, aside from the fact, of course, that from an educational point of view, um, blind tasting is necessary really uh, to develop your, your tasting skills and your focus and your analytical uh, abilities in, in wine assessment. Uh, this is uh, uh, extremely difficult, uh, the, the extremely uh, important. And as we all know, we taste the wine and we think, um, oh, this wine, maybe it's not, not a little bit of balance and uh, and uh, well, not so great. And then you see the label and, and, and then it's, oh, oh, now after 10 minutes, now it's opening up. It's really <laughs> great. Uh, so, so knowing then what it is does something to your mind and suddenly we view the wine differently. And it's difficult to really stay neutral and, and analytical and really based on what you have in your glass and judge from that, make your analysis uh, and not be influenced by the label and say, okay, this wine's expensive, great label, must be good. It's often not the case. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how, uh, how important in the blind tasting do you think is the practice that you've tasted a lot and the theoretical knowledge that you can make the analytical, uh, like decision based in, uh, in, in knowledge, not rather guessing, just... You know. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so th this makes then the difference from probably amateurs who start tasting and some people um, are great tasters without uh, having a theoretical background uh, they they seem to memorize uh, you know wines very well so i've met people who really don't know about wine you know but they remember exactly the character of a wine they had two years ago five years ago it's it's quite amazing sometimes uh, whereas people, of course, professionals who have the, 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 the theoretic background in a blind tasting then uh, can also use this uh, knowledge uh, when they're tasting blind uh, to deduct, to uh, really then work through the wine and, and make logical, um, logical kind of uh, conclusions to, to, to then uh, come back, um, exclude other things, etc. But if you don't know about this, you can't exclude, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you just say, I know it, oh, I think it's an unlucky guess. Whereas um, on the level of, of, of Master Wild, of course, it's usually so that people have a, a very, very strong theoretical knowledge so that they can really, in the blind tasting, uh, use this knowledge uh, to then identify, not only identify, identify is one thing, but it's also really to understand the wine and, and, and explain why this wine is what it is and why this quality is what it is and how will this wine develop and why. Yeah. I sometimes actually, for myself at least, think that uh, the greater the no knowledge, the theoretical knowledge, oh. the more difficult for me is the tasting. You think too much. <laughs> yes, yes, because then I think, oh, this could be also that and that and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but if you don't know about these other options, you're just like, this is yeah, just. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's there's pro and cons. You know, this first taste, the first nose. You know, goes, oh, it is. You know. Yeah. Uh, this could be right, but it could be also wrong. Uh, so therefore, very important that you really analyze, then step back, analyze the wine again. And if everything fits together at the end of the day, then probably your first impression was right. Um, um, but um, so this is, but this is for everybody the same thing. You know, it's, it's so difficult uh, to, 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 to stay neutral, to forget about your first impression. Say, okay, yes, yeah. I thought first so, but let's first really analyze the wine in depth and then come back and then think through it again. 
And if you think and say, I still no idea what it is, then you think again, what <laughs> could it be with all your knowledge? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And, and then hopefully you might get there. Yeah, get there. Um, do you think that there's a risk to become too technical with wine tasting and forget about the wine appreciation? Yes, yes. Uh, and I try if I if I get aware of of of, of such things with people I meet or know, I, I try to remind them in a nice way that that we this is something to be appreciated and uh, to have fun with and. Uh, Okay, you have there's a certain, certain element of, of that technical approach. You see that very often from from trained, very high skilled winemakers. You know, um, they 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 have a glass and they suddenly and this is all about the, all the group the same thing. Oh, and say oh, I think to to warm fermentation temperature to get it and uh, you know so they go and say and what do you think is it good is it not good and 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 and, and the, this is also an important thing you know. Also, in, in in terms of marketing and in terms of getting people to 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 appreciate wine, you know, if we if we tell them that you have to do, uh, I don't know what kind of courses to appreciate wine. That's nonsense. You know, everybody can appreciate wine, uh, and and of course, um, you hear these people then talking about these technical details. That's a different story, and uh, um, I hope that that at the end of the day, it's still. Uh, pure pleasure in the glass uh, and not just um, addition of technical uh, kind of information that we then figure out in the glass. Yeah. In the interview with uh, Andrew Jefford, I liked what he said. We were talking about the wine comp- uh, wine competitions, like where you taste wine. And he also said that too often people taste like detectives, like, you know, too high acidity, a bit, you know, too much a bitterness here or phenolic uh, element. And he said, but we have to taste for other people yeah. um, and, and, and think, is this wine nice, you know, on the table uh, for the event, for the regular event, you know, in, in the family? So, yes, yes, I agree. And I think... Uh, I fully agree on that as well. And um, there is a danger that we become too obsessed with, you know, uh, those things. And uh, of course, if, we, if you have a panel together, it's it's um, sometimes uh, um, that uh, you want to be the strongest opinion on the panel <laughs> and and uh, make your strong point. Um, th- that's part of this thing. But it's um, in general, it's it's one hundred percent what he said. I I would just, I would hundred percent agree on that. Yeah, and uh, I was also wondering. It is especially true with masters of wine, where you kind of taste one and you go down to like the residual sugar amount, you know, grams per liter. And when, uh, and that kind of information is needed out of you in the tastings. But then when you go and ask winemakers, they kind of, why do you want to know? <laughs> like it tastes good if it's in balance. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah we get this, uh, this, uh, and there's in particular, um, historically at least it was like French people or so winemakers, you know, uh, well, well, I have no idea, you know, that's it. I, I don't know. I, I don't care, actually. Yeah. Um, for me, it's imbalanced. For me, it's fine. What's the alcohol? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Look at the bottle. It's your wine. But, um, uh, but there's also other winemakers who who, who are really much more technical-minded. Uh, um, so there's also various approaches. At one stage, we, you know, when we started taking wine more serious, um, 60s or so 70s suddenly you know started also talking about those uh, like analytical elements in the wine you know maybe also very much in this Germanic world Austria yeah. Germany you know chick, chick, chick. Um, whereas um, in Italy in France also in Spain it, it was especially in, in France oh it's terroir well that's why it tastes like this and why interested in what I do in the cellar? It's, it's, it comes out of being up like that. It just ferments, and then it's what it is. So, of course, uh, <laughs> as we know, uh, there's more to it. Um, uh, but we must not get too technical when we talk about wine. Mm, I like that. That's the quote of the day. <laughs> um, uh, so, I also wanted to ask you. Currently, the world is filled with the variety of wine myths, legends. You know, semi-truths. 
Uh, there's also like blogs and, and podcasts, including myself. So where do people should look for source material they can trust when they study? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would be but, your but, this is, but this is the same thing. Um, it's a, a development we have in many different fields that uh, uh, now information is widely available uh, all around the globe and everybody uh, can become a, a wine educator uh, uh, on the net and, um, and there's also a lot of rubbish of course that is suddenly not only maybe as it used to be maybe he's telling to his friends uh, but he's telling to the world <laughs> yeah um, so so there are of course those institutions uh, who offer professional uh, education uh, and and of course uh, it's trust trustworthy uh, and there's of course uh, in every country, you have you have leading institutions who professional work with wine, um, and there's also, in this to a degree, um, can be a little bit of a problem that wine education is a strong marketing tool, a very strong marketing tool. Um, I, I started in my early career, so I was working at Mondavi in California. We're still Mondavi was around and everything. And I was um, working in a different field, but next to me there were the guys of the marketing department. So there was a, a marketing department and they had an education department there as well. This is like uh, mid 80s. So where, where education, but in those days it was real great education. It was not promotional education. Uh, but many years uh, education companies, not only producers, also trade as, as, as promotion. So there, also you have to think twice. You know, uh, when when you get a neutral kind of uh, education opinion, um, you know, if somebody is behind it who was selling this product, uh, then uh, probably it's, there, there is a great possibility there's a little bit biased uh, kind yeah. of content as well. Okay, so would you say that it's important to always? in any field to kind of add a bit of critical thinking yeah. where this information is coming from? 100%, 100%. And say also in our case, we are based in Austria. So it was important to me that we avoid uh, any kind of feeling, oh, they do this ta this this uh, education to promote Austrian wine. Well, Austrian wine is is 1% of our international courses. So that's the, the quantity of Austrian wine in the world. Um, and it's important extremely important to me uh, that that we always uh, present the wines um, as neutral as as unbiased as, as possible at the end of the day if the consumer isn't stupid the consumer will realize uh, they want to sell me something this is mm -hmm. not true I was actually going to ask you uh, how do you think with the uh, wine Academy the Austrian wine Academy and Austrian wine together maybe uh, you've been like growing together maybe the Austrian Wine Academy has helped the Austrian wine to also be more popular uh, in in the in the Europe or world. Yes, um, uh, this is look. We are like uh, I call myself like I I'm a child of the wine scandal. Uh, we had a wine scandal back in 1985 that changed everything to the good in Austria. Of course, first years were catastrophe. But it made the Austrian and Austrian producers realize they can only survive with top quality wine. And it made the consumers realize that they better consume higher quality wines and they better know what they drink uh, and it would be better and uh, more pleasant. So th this development of Austrian wine growers, this golden age of developments and uh, because 30 years ago, 35 years ago, those were small farmers doing those small wines for Austria, and that was it. Now it's around the globe. They present the wines around the globe, build wineries for five, six, seven million euros. So this is unthinkable in those days that it would go this direction. And we, of course, profited from this excitement that was also produced through Austrian producers. On the other hand, of course, uh, our producers uh, profit, of course, from the fact that uh, we get many, many people from around the globe here to do education here. We provide also additional education, hands-on wine in vineyards and master classes with these producers, with these great guys who are great support to us. And this is part of the product, so to say. So when you go back, that was a great course. 
and we visited this girl, we did this and that. So it, it's hand in hand, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was just thinking that's really, really important. Yeah. And uh, one of the last questions. <laughs> um, so what opportunities uh, has opened your education that you have the Master of Wine for you? Just so maybe that other people who are thinking yes or no to do the WSCT or, or go into the Institute of Masters. Well, my mind, mind <laughs> is not such a, a, a good example because I do the same thing I did before. <laughs> but I think I can say uh, much more successful. So when when I became Master of Wine, oh, it's 25 years now, 1898, it's 25 years now that I became Master of Wine. It was, especially when we went international when we started courses running in Germany, in, in, in Switzerland, in other countries, it was a master of wine who was heading the academy. So yeah. this was this was already, you know, so prestige. Quite prestige yeah. yeah. And and in this in this case, in this uh, in this context, uh, it, it it really I think uh, was 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 a USP in those days for, for this wine school that it's headed by Master of Wine and that our teachers are most of them masters of wine and, and things like that. And every master wine has his own story. Um, you know, how did they promote their title? How did their title help them? Uh, probably some would say, well, I'm, I'm not really. I do the same thing I did before. And I know of some master of wine who suddenly nowadays own castles, own this and that, because they were extremely successful in the business, of course, because they were good businessmen. But of course, also yeah. uh, with the Master of Wine title, many, many things uh, are much easier. Mm. All right. Okay. And the last question I usually ask to everyone, what is one, or maybe if you have few, uh, wine myth that you would like to debunk? Wine the, myth? Yeah. There's a lot of myths surrounding this industry. You may call it a myth, but it's not really a myth. But there's a feeling out there that real wine connoisseurs and wine lovers drink dry wine. That's rubbish. <laughs> you know? uh, some of the greatest wine on this planet are sweet wines. We are sitting here in, Rose, in the home of one of the oldest traditions of Botrytis wines, 500 years. And those are some of the greatest wines of the world. And some of us students coming here say, oh, that's sweet. I'm, I'm a wine connoisseur, I drink dry, you know rubbish they miss a big part of of the world of wine and uh, i want to emphasize that uh, this is a big myth that uh, connoisseurs drink only dry they miss out on something very important yeah i agree and i'm surprised that you said that students come and don't drink because i i always thought that uh those who start to study wine they love wine mm -hmm. and then they must know that some of the greatest wines in the world are sweet <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It was absolutely amazing. And actually, time flew. I was surprised it just was so quick. And uh, yes, so this is a small uh, gift from us. It's a uh, no sediment uh, Okay, cap. thank you. Yeah, I hope you and enjoy it. I, I wear it when I welcome students <laughs> uh, in the academy. <laughs> Feel free. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. My pleasure.